we send in the message to Governor Patterson to remember those words he spoke back then now and to turn those words into action and finally change the Rockefeller drug laws in a positive, reformative way. Thank you. Anthony Papa was convicted under the Rockefeller drug laws. They were passed in 1973 when Nelson Rockefeller was the governor of New York State and frustrated at the fact that an earlier program he had planned had not been effective in dealing with drug addiction in New York. So in 1973, the governor proposed mandatory sentences for people convicted of drug possession. It took discretion away from judges, to some extent from district attorneys, eliminated plea bargaining, and filled the prisons of New York State. Over the last 36 years, reformers have managed to strip away some of the harsher parts of the law. Now with Democrats controlling all three branches of the state government, Albany seems poised to finish the job. This includes eliminating mandatory minimum sentences for nonviolent offenders like Anthony Papa. In 1985, I made the biggest mistake in my life. I got involved with drug activity. I was asked to deliver an envelope of four and a half ounces of cocaine. The reason I got involved is because I got desperate. Uh, when, you get, when you get desperate, you do stupid things. And I did it for $500, and I ruined my entire life. Despite having no criminal record, he was sentenced to two 15-year terms in prison. The judge knew I wasn't a drug dealer. Attorney General Holder, uh, a couple of months ago, called for changing these mandatory minimum sentencing laws because the system became broken because of it. I mean, 2.3 million Americans locked up, uh, 500,000 because of the drug war uh, in the federal system, over 100,000. So th th there's got to be somebody that's eligible for, for a executive clemency. I mean, look, if you could give a turkey a second chance, why can't you give a nonviolent drug offender a second chance? Let's go to that. Tony Papa, who served 12 years in prison for a first-time nonviolent drug offense, said it's pastime addiction is treated as a medical problem, not a crime. People should not be put away in prison for many, many years for putting substances in their bodies. That's not the answer. It's been in the middle of this fight for reform ever since the Rockefeller drug laws literally changed his life. Anthony Papa is the author of 15 to Life, the title matching the sentence he received after what he says was a first-time drug offense. Tony spent 12 years in Sing Sing before being granted clemency by Governor George Pataki. Since then, he's been a leading advocate for reform. His story is an inspiring one, and it's the subject of his book. In just a bit, we'll get his reaction to the reforms he has worked for for so long. Take that right for granted when it's taken away from them. Ask Anthony Papa, who lost his right to vote when he spent 12 years in Sing Sing prison for delivering a package containing cocaine. His harsh punishment came under the old Rockefeller drug laws. Today he's an activist trying to reform those laws and an author with a new book out called 15 to Life, How I Painted My Way to Freedom. In it, he reveals how finding himself through his artwork gave him hope while serving his hard time. His paintings were on display at the Whitney Museum this past week. Thank you so much for coming. No, they're entitled to their own opinion. Exactly. But I, I'm, I'm telling you the facts. I've been through this. I've been inside. I've been outside. I'm an activist. I work for a leading organization in the United States, Drug Policy Alliance. We believe in treatment instead of incarceration. We have a pilot program. Actually, California, Prop 215, uh, 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 medical marijuana. Prop 36 deals with... Uh, Treatment instead of incarceration saved the state of California billions of dollars and tens and thousands of lives. So it does work, and we're trying to make that same type of deal here in New York State where people with medical problems, uh, uh, drug problems, are treated as a medical problem, not a punitive problem. But, again, these DAs say, listen, Pop is the exception, not the rule. Most of these guys are dealers. They're bad guys. What kind of message are you sending if you're in some creep peddling drugs to kids, etc., and you're not going to give them a mandatory sentence? I need this thing for leverage when I'm working out a plea. Well, look, major kingpins, and by the way, as I said before in your show, I've never seen one in prison uh, uh, under drug, uh, Rockefeller drug laws. I've ne never seen a kingpin. They're saying... Uh, that they capture them. I never saw one in prison, and I and I helped uh, dealt with hundreds of cases. I was a jailhouse attorney for many years. Uh, they, this is the argument they're making: uh, you let these people out, you open the floodgates, uh, all these bad apples will be coming out in the street. This is not the case. 
Most people incarcerated under Rockefeller drug laws are not first time nonviolent offenders. 80 are nonviolent. So district attorneys are afraid of losing their powers. This is why they're, they're making the statement. If, if, if the way it works now, they control the outcome of the case from the beginning. Uh, they, they control who goes into treatment. They control what people sentence, are sentenced with. So if you take that power away from them and give it to judges, they're afraid they're going to lose their power. And they live and die by their rates of conviction. That's another reason why they're saying that. My name is Anthony Papa. I spent 12 years in prison under the Rockefeller drug laws. When I was a young man, I made a mistake. It was the only time I got in trouble with the law. 12 years in a six by nine foot cage. These laws waste money, destroy lives, and break up families. Governor Pataki's plan to change these laws is not true reform, and he knows it. After eight years of talk, it's time for a change. Tom Colasano's plan is true reform, and that's why I'm supporting him. Mandatory minimums for low-level nonviolent drug offenses. Well, for more, we're joined by two guests in New York. Anthony Papa is author of This Side of Freedom, Life After Clemency. He's an anti-drug war activist, painter, and author. In 1985, Anthony Papa agreed to deliver an envelope of cocaine in a police sting operation in return for $500. His first, <clears throat> his first and only criminal offense cost him a 15-year-to-life sentence. In 1996, Papa won a sentence commutation from then-New York Governor George Pataki. In 2016, Papa received a pardon from New York Governor Andrew Cuomo. He's believed to be the first person in New York State history to receive both a sentence commutation and a pardon. My name is Anthony Papa. This is my art installation called The Drug War. I'm artist in residence for the Drug Policy Alliance. I was a first-time nonviolent drug offender that was sentenced to two 15-year-to-life sentences under the Rockefeller drug laws. The way I got out of prison was through my art. In 1988, one night I was sitting in my cell, picked up a mirror, looked in the mirror, saw an individual who was going to spend the most productive years of life in a cage, and I painted a self-portrait which appeared at the Whitney Museum of American Art seven years later. I got a lot of publicity on my case and Governor George Pataki granted me executive clemency. So I used my art as a vehicle to get awareness about the issue of the drug war in the United States. I wanted to save those I left behind. 